Hey there. Um, so today I want to talk to you about hips and um, how that relates to knee orientation and foot orientation in the end of the springing phase of a strike. Um, again, you know, like like the last video, I'm probably going to be talking mostly to you long sorters out there, um, messer guys, sword and buckler guys, maybe. Um, this may or may not apply to rapierists, um, primarily because, uh, you know, according to my understanding, rapierists don't frequently pass one foot past the other foot, which is where I'm seeing um, trouble crop up for some people. So um, rapierists, again, you're off the hook. This may or may not apply to you. Uh, but everybody else, um, if you are a person whom, in the end of your step finds that your your lead foot turns inwards or turns toward your opponent, um, then maybe this is for you. Uh, having a, a look at what the problem is, and then I'm going to try to back you through kind of my thought process of, of what might be going on for people when they have this trouble and some ways you might think about correcting this problem. So um, I'm wearing kind of goofy, goofy clothes today, an all black outfit, <coughs> and I've put some Velcro on to kind of help you see um, relevant points on my body. So, so this line is going um, in between the two uh, points of my hips, uh, my, my hip crests here where they stick out, and then I have these vertical lines that are running from really where the big tendon is that inserts into your hip uh, for, for your quadriceps, I think. Uh, I'm not an anatomist. Uh, and then I just drove them straight down to the center of my knee. So, um, you know, if I am standing with my feet together, we get a slight V shape, uh, which I think is to be expected, um, considering, you know, where I placed all of these lines. Uh, but, you know, it, they don't necessarily denote any, anything other than helping you to see better um, given the limits of video. So that being said, um, I'm going to draw attention to how I am standing. Um, so right now what I've done is I've bent my left leg, I've put all of my weight into my right hip, and I have dropped my left hip. So again, you know, it, it's maybe hard to see due to the angle of, of the camera. I'm going to see if maybe I can correct that. But at the very least, y'all can see that, um, that my weight is over this side. It kind of sticks that hip out a little bit, drops this shoulder and hip, and this shoulder and hip kind of go high, right? Um, and, and so if you're a person that kind of naturally tends to stand around like this, and this is a comfortable place for you, you might find that you brought that into your swordsmanship in a way that is, is, is perhaps detrimental to you. So um, let's see if I can orient the camera a little bit different and uh, get some shots for you on what this might be causing. <coughs> okay, so I've reoriented the camera a little bit. Um, so that hopefully I'm going to be able to uh, show you kind of this problem that we're gonna dig into um, with regards to uh, the front knee. So um, it might happen that you've seen this, that you do this, uh, that at the end of your sword strike, your knee is oriented inwards, maybe towards your opponent, if your opponent moved offline, right? And that your foot is also pointed in that direction. So from a little bit further back, right? So this happens to people where they have this inward orientation at the end of their strike. Um, and what that can kind of look like is in fact both feet turning the same direction at the end of the strike, okay? so. Um, why is this a bad thing, number one? Okay, well, if you're ending like this, but you're springing forward, hopefully you can see, and I think the camera and the floor and everything shifted, but hopefully you can see how 
um, my weight is going to be going against the outside of my knee, the outside of my ankle, the outside of my foot. So not only is this not very stable for my ankle, it's not a great place to land, but it's really, it, it can be painful on that knee eventually, right? Not right away. It's not something that you're going to just like leap forward and just blow your knee out. But over time, um, this could start to cause you some serious problems and really start to suck. So what do we want to happen then is that even if you're not particularly going offline, you're landing forward with your front knee um, oriented straight. I mean, I came offline a little bit, so you know I'm not sure if the camera sees this. But if I'm straight in line, right? <coughs> Boom, if I land right here, I want my big toe oriented in the same direction as my knee joint bends, right? Um, and all of that being in the direction that the weight of my body is traveling to so that I can recover on this, on this knee um, and not have any trouble with it. Again, a, a good place to land here is here. So again, that you see that I could, you know, I mean, we talked about not putting our knee over a toe and all that, but I could roll off of this and continue to spring wherever I need to spring, right? Because I'm able to use the entire extent of my foot and all of my weight is able to come onto this and I have a good bit of movement and freedom here that when I turn my hip. So I, I kept my I kept my heel in place, right? And turn my hip just slightly. Now my weight going forward, it becomes restricted by the outs by my knee joint, right? Because my knee, my knee wants to bend now towards the camera, and my weight is trying to go to this back corner. Alright? So that's that's a really sucky place to be. Um, and, and it puts bad, bad weight on my joints, all right? As well as not being martially optimized, right? If, if I can only use part of my muscles to do my second spring or to do a recover back or, or whatever footwork I might need to use martially, um, if I can't bring my entire leg to bear to do this, I'm hampered. Right? So this is an issue not just for you physically and as far as long-term injury and sustainability, but also for martial, all right? For your martiality, I suppose I should say. <clears throat> so, so what is happening that is causing people in their strikes to end up here? All right, and I've thought about it a lot. Some people, I would say naturally, intuitively, always end up doing that little rotation. Um, and that's the way I think of it. It's, it's a rotation on the hips that happens mid-step. Um, and some people never do this, right? So if this isn't your problem, it's not your problem. You know, you might be interested for your training partners, but otherwise, you know, you don't have to worry about this. Um, but for people who do do this, <coughs> I, I've come to think it has to do with the hip. So, as I was standing earlier and sitting into my hip with that bent knee, you know, leaning in, right? If you tend to stand like that and you tend to walk, putting your weight into each hip and through, then it may be that you tend to do that when you strike with a sword. So if, if you start <clears throat> back here, and I'm gonna start relatively neutral with my hips, I'm not gonna open real big like I tend to do. Um, so if you start in your sword position and you put all of your weight into that hip, start your strike and follow, it rotates you around and you get this orientation that I've seen some people have. Okay, if I maintain a horizontal hip, a neutrally, neutral hip as far as where my weight is on each hip, and step 
I come straight forward, all right? So one thing that you can do to test yourself um, and, and kind of see if you're having this trouble or where this trouble might arise from for you is you could do just some simple exercise um, lunges and just see, does that trigger anything for you? So if you start with your, your feet hips width apart or a little more, Right? Lunge forward, come back, lunge forward, come back. And you have no trouble, right? Your knees stay in line. Your weight comes forward with your knee and your ankle and your hip and your foot. And all of this is fine and you can recover. Okay, that tells you that that's no problem for you and that's great. And that's where you want to land swordsmanship-wise. So if you start with your feet apart and you come forward, you want to be able to land in that same sort of lunge. So maybe make yourself keep a neutral hip, but spread your feet apart. So this might not be the way you fight, but, but maybe keep yourself here and practice coming through into a big lunge and then come up, okay? So maybe if you are super strong, you wanna do those walking lunges where you just kind of keep going, that might be a way to practice this as well, um, but that might be too much for you. So again, that you're gonna come from a neutral square hip, pass through and land again with a neutral hip and your foot on. Now, if you go to do this, okay, and I'm gonna get rid of my neutral hip, right? I'm gonna put all my weight into this heel and try to come off of this heel, it, it already wanted to collapse in. I think you guys probably saw it as it landed. And that wasn't me trying to do that, that's just me thinking about this leg. So I'm gonna think about weight going into here, right? And this wants to turn, it doesn't want to land, it, it sticks this hip out there, right? All right, so back to good, neutral, and forward. Okay, so that, that is something maybe you could work with to see what that does for you. All right, and then you can build up um, further, like one way you could build up this muscle is to practice standing on one foot but with both legs straight. So that means that I'm not lifting this and sitting in this side, but rather I'm picking up this hip and standing on this one. So it's the opposite of sitting into it, right? I'm actually kind of contracting it to lift this hip and I can swing through the straight leg. That's all good. Uh, so the final, final steps is gonna be to get more into your fighting position, whatever that might be. So for, for me, for Von Tag, I open up my hips really far and I bring my shoulder back so that I can strike out, right? Okay, and then again, I'm landing good. Um, everything is, is square. I could then spring to this side easily with no effort, all right? Okay, so putting your sword in your hand and seeing if you can do the same stuff, okay? Bonus points if your entire floor moves when you do this. <laughs> all right, so, um, for those of you that study Lishnar, maybe a really good thing to practice this and really test your skills is to do it with a Zversha, all right? Because this is going to bring your sword across much higher um, and adding that rotational quality that Zversha has is going to have a tendency to pull you in the direction that we're trying not to do. So, from your shoulder, right? Make sure that everything is nice and square. You're good. You can spring off of this hip with strength without sitting into it, okay? Ooh. Right, all nice and good. I've sprung off line. I have my hip nice and tight here, which allows me to spring up on the other foot and go to the other side, all right? So these are things to practice and play with if this is your problem. 
Um, I'd love to hear about it, um, if this idea works for you, of maintaining your strength in your outer hip rather than letting it sink. All right? Thank you.